let's really quickly just start with some definitions. What exactly is reduction? What is oxidation? Reduction is the gain of electrons, while oxidation is the loss of electrons. And a very easy way of memorizing that is by simply saying oil rig. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. And so if you think about it, we're talking about electrons. If an element is oxidized, meaning it loses electrons, its charge is going to become more positive. If an element is reduced, meaning it gains electrons, that means its charge is going to be more negative. So let's look at some rules with regards to assigning oxidation numbers. Now oxidation numbers are simply a way of keeping track of how many electrons are gained, how many electrons are lost, and by whom. So in order to understand oxidation and reduction reactions, we have to be able to assign these oxidation numbers. So to start off with, elements always have an oxidation number of zero. If they have no charge and they're by themselves, they have a zero oxidation number. The sum of the oxidation numbers of compounds is also going to be zero. And then if you have a polyatomic ion, the sum of its oxidation numbers is simply going to be the sum of the charge of that polyatomic ion. Now oxygen normally has a negative two oxidation number except when it acts as a peroxide, O2. In that case it has a negative one oxidation number. Now hydrogen has a plus one oxidation number except when it's bound to a metal, like for example in the example of sodium hydride that we saw before. In that case, because sodium has a plus one oxidation number, which we'll get to in one second, hydrogen, the hydride ion, would have a negative one oxidation number. Fluorine is always negative one, and while halogens tend to have an oxidation number of negative one, they can actually have variable oxidation states. Group one metals always have a plus one, and group two metals always have a plus two oxidation number. And positive charge generally comes before the negative charge. So keeping all of this in mind, if you see oxygen, normally negative two for the most part. Hydrogen normally plus one unless it's a hydride. Fluorine norm always negative one. Other halogens you can't 100% of the time tell, but they tend to be negative one. Group one metals plus one. Group two metals plus two oxidation numbers. So let's look at in practice too. I've got potassium permanganate here. The first thing I look at always is oxygen. Oxygen is always minus two, unless it's a peroxide. And potassium next, because it's always plus one. So now I need to determine the oxidation number of manganese. Well, that entire compound needs an oxidation number of zero overall. Well, oxygen is negative two, but there are four of them. So that's a total of negative eight. Potassium has a plus one, so in order for the overall oxidation number to be zero, manganese must have a plus seven oxidation number. Okay, for the next one, oxygen is always minus two again, which, and if you look at that, that means that the total oxidation number contributed by oxygen is negative eight. Well, here's a problem. This is a polyatomic ion with a two minus charge, meaning the overall oxidation number needs to be minus two, which means since oxygen is overall minus eight, Sulfur must be plus six in order to have an oxidation number of negative two for the entire polyatomic ion.